Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be painting a beautiful waterfall scene using acrylic paints. And uh, I've got my husband, Mark, here with me today. Hey there, everybody. Doing this live. So I hope you are ready to paint and get inspired to do this. And let's get started. Okay, here's my example painting. Um, the original photo was submitted by Sherry Cannon Rierick. Thank you, Sherry. We had a photo contest in my Thankful Art group on Facebook last month and really enjoyed this one. We are, my Patreon group uh, on Facebook was doing water for our challenge this month, so thought we would do a waterfall for our bonus video. So welcome to those who are watching us today live. We really appreciate you. I'm going to change my glasses here real quick. <laughs> get there's so much detail with this one. I'm going to get it get up a cl up close. <laughs> All right, I'm going to set this aside, and I've got a nine by twelve inch panel here. It's the MDF board with gesso, so it's already prepped and ready to go. And I'm going to use some burnt umber and. A little bit of a doxazine purple. Let me go over my palette really quick with you while I'm painting. Got burnt umber, doxazine purple, carbon black, ultramarine blue, thalo blue, thalo green, cadmium yellow, light and medium, but one or the other are probably fine. I'll grab some black and do some black over here where it's really dark under the waterfall. Um, set that down. Yellow oxide, burnt sienna. Cad Yellow Light and Quinacridone Magenta and, Diox er, and uh, Titanium White. So, And then I've also got some unbleached titanium over here. So just some browns and kind of a basic rainbow pal palette. There's not a whole lot of red in this one, but all the other colors are kind of represented. I'm just doing side by side, side to side brush strokes here. I'll grab some more of this burnt umber on this side. Really, we're just doing um, this dark color for our undercoat because there's a lot of darkness in these rocks. Um, with acrylic painting, mostly um, you're going to want to, you know, most of the time, you're going to want to start out dark and add light colors on top. So there's there's a few times when I'll do light underneath and like when we did the sea turtle but for the most part this is kind of what you're going to want to do down here at the bottom I'm going to grab some phthalo blue and just do a little bit of that phthalo blue since it's going to be that water down there but I want it really dark we'll put the lighter colors on top uh, acrylics are great for layering so using the, the darkest. I usually, when I'm looking at a photo, looking at Sherry's photo there, um, go ahead and pop that up there, honey, so they can see the photo. Um, I'll get there. Hold on one second. Shit me. I'm, I'm there. I got it. Okay. Um, see how much dark is, especially around the waterfall area there, is super dark. Um, and all of the little rocks and things have really dark shadows in there so we're just going to go nice and dark to start with and try to clean up these edges so you don't get it on your hands there today honey so what's the uh, difficulty level here oh uh, um I, it wasn't particularly difficult i don't think um the drawing's pretty pretty basic uh the brush strokes it's mainly kind of dry brushing and so I, I really don't think this, it, it looks a little bit more complicated than it is. There's a lot of steps to it, a lot of different layers, but I definitely think it's still in the beginner to intermediate range. Maybe not a first time painting, but. So out of 10 stick men, how many? Out of 10 stick men? Oh, I'd give it about a five or six. 
something like that. So it's like kind of mid-level. The waterfall is probably the hardest part, you know, just to get it so that you're not adding too much paint to your brush and, you know, getting the direction correct and all that. That was probably the most difficult part of it. But the rocks and the grass and my greenery and tree and everything was very easy, a lot easier than you probably think. So hopefully. And I kept it kind of impressionist uh, looking. It's not super ultra realism, so. Um. Good, thank you. All right, grab my chalk here. I'm gonna wipe down my edges so I don't get it all over my hands like I just did. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, so. I, my waterfall is going to take up this whole third of the painting right here, this whole section. Um, so I want to go almost to the top here and do kind of a diagonal line, slight diagonal where that waterfall is going to start and drop it almost straight down from there. So it's pretty wide like about like that and right about the halfway mark on the canvas maybe just above it there's going to be our first layer of rocks and these these rocks are going to go straight across this part is going to be in shadow so you're not going to really see this but there's going to be an outcropping that kind of juts up around it here so and these actually kind of angle down this way Slightly kind of follows this line of the waterfall actually. And the, um, I don't know what is it, this is a grotto, is that the name, the, the ter technical term for this? Grotto is kind of like a cave, this looks like it could be a cave or at least a, you know, rocky. Do I need to look that up? <laughs> Because you know I know. You know I don't know that. Right. <laughs> I'm going to call it a grotto. <laughs> Just let's be use our fancy words today. <laughs> um, so this, it's actually kind of a bowl shape. So the, the rock face kind of does this curve, curvature right here. And even down here, there's even a little bit more curvature. So you're going to see that in the rocks. These rocks are going to kind of face down and there's kind of a bank right here that happens and I put a tree in front of it. I just felt like I wanted a full size tree. There was kind of like a little sapling sort of sitting up on top of here but I made it a little bit more of a full size tree. Um, and then there's kind of some rocks coming up down this way. All of these rocks, if they're actually really fun to paint because they're very linear there um, there's this kind of chip shell or whatever kind of rock that is I'm not sure but it's very uh, it's got all these really cool layers and things in it and then up here there's a big old rock just kind of looking at my reference photo here comes out from here and you're gonna see the angle of it that so it kind of comes out like that and then there's another one that sort of curves like this right about where this one ends and then it continues down and joins up with all of these so this is our biggest kind of rock right here and then you're seeing the face of it angled in and broken and then it kind of angles back on itself right here and up here at the top it kind of goes almost straight 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 and then these ones are angled down and then these ones are straight and these ones angle down and then there's a ledge right here seeing the underside of that 
And this all kind of has a big wide shelf right here. So all of this is going to be dark, dark, dark. All This is all kind of shadow from these rocks above it. Some lines here. And then there's another little ledge or area that's jutting out right here. And then some more of this shale. And then you come down to this hill right here. Kind of cuts it all off. And then our tree is going to be in this area. So it's going to cover up most of this area. And then down here, we're going to and continue to angle it a little bit. All this is angled in. The water is right about down here somewhere. It's pretty low. Kind of angles up a little bit. There's a rock that sticks out right here. And there's a ledge. And your waterfall is actually coming all the way out to here. So this is the bottom of the waterfall on this side. And there's all these So this one here may not be that that high up. And there's a rock right here and another little section right there. Okay. I hope that's making sense. It's kind of looking like a mess, but <laughs> it'll make sense once we start putting our greenery and stuff in here, hopefully. Okay, so basically we've got all these lines kind of converging on this. These ones are a little bit more at an angle here because they're kind of bowl shaped and the ones that are straight on facing us are pretty much horizontal. And then these ones on this side are angling down this way a little bit. And these rocks are coming down here. There's a the water edge right there. And then there's a big rock right here that juts out. Goes all the way up to there. And there's the bottom of our waterfall right here. And that's about where that this rock comes all the way down to that. Okay. Water here, water here. And everywhere we've got one of these level layers here, we're gonna have another layer of rocks for this waterfall to bounce off. So there's one here that kind of bounces this way. There's one just above it that does like that. There's one right here that kind of curves this way. This will help us later, kind of, if we kind of go ahead and do this right now. There's, that way when we put in our water, we can just kind of go over these areas that we've already kind of mapped out for ourselves. This one's come all the way down here. And then there's some water falling this way off of this one little layers and then this is our main pool right here so there's a lot of big area right here some more coming in and then these are all kind of converging this way and this way into this V shape right here and there's a couple layers the water direction you're going to want to go out and down. So these ones kind of spray out this way a little bit, but for the most part gravity is going to do the work. Once that water free falls it's going to go straight down. Okay, so there's our 
our drawing. Hopefully I went over that well enough. You'll see when we get to, to doing it, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. All right, let me see. I think I'm going to do, start out doing my rock with this flat brush. This is my bright number four. The main thing with rock um, is... Well, let me grab some burnt, uh, burnt sienna and phthalo blue. I'm going to make this deep blue green color. Got a little bit of the unbleached titanium in there. So I'm pressing my brush flat and I'm going to use it instead of holding it upright like I would normally hold my brush. For these rocks, I'm going to hold it at a more lazy angle. I'm going to hold it sideways and drag it so that it's picking up just some of the texture. Uh, if you've got a really heavily textured canvas, it'll work even better. Um, I'm going to put this down here in the water for now. And it'll be in some of these rocks as well. So I'm just going to lay some of this dark blue in here in some of my shadow areas for my rock. With these shale ones, I can kind of hold it upright and just drag it. It's gonna be subtle at first, so don't go too dark too fast or too bright too fast. Just gonna add a little bit of color to the to that dark brown to give it some other stuff going on in our shadows there whoops I had it up high okay sorry right, you're gonna have to help me with that huh? yeah you'd think I'd catch on by now <laughs> go back and add some more of that color but I want to go ahead and start in with my, some of my lighter colors first and then we'll add to it and spray my palette so that my paint stays moist. Uh -oh. Alright let's make a kind of a medium brown color with our unbleached titanium. Unbleached titanium is going to be the main color for our rocks. A little bit of yellow oxide and burnt umber. Those are going to be our like go-to colors for the majority of the rocks. So this is kind of a, a light brown from the burnt umber and um, sorry, I'm thinking and drawing, painting here, I'm trying to concentrate. Um, <laughs> burnt umber and and, and Oxide, whatever that color was. Titanium, unbleached titanium. I don't know why I said oxide. Okay, so I'm gonna do these brighter facing rocks with this color first. Just a little bit of this one. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of the dark in between because there's some layering happening even on these bright rocks. You're seeing some layering. And by dragging it, I'm gonna get these light, kind of choppy, choppy coverage. It won't be too solid. Let's go ahead and do some coming down a little bit. using the corner of my brush to kind of pull some lines here and there if I want straighter lines. I'm 
little bit more paint on my brush. So I'm putting a fair, fair amount of paint on my brush. I'm not, this isn't really technically dry brushing necessarily because with the dry brush you would be kind of scrubbing the paint on. This is, this way we're kind of, we're loading the brush fairly thick but we're just skimming with the brush. So it's a little bit different than dry brushing. Because we want our paint to go on somewhat thickly, we just want it to be an uneven application, if that makes sense. There, my first one. <laughs> it does make sense to me. Good, good. And I don't even paint. Good. <laughs> you should. You're getting all these free lessons. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I'm leaving a lot of this dark still um, around, too. That's intentional. I don't want to cover up all my dark to start with. We can always go darker or, you know, go lighter. But we want to leave some of our shadow areas in there. Over here, there's some bright rocks sticking out right here. And then this whole area is kind of in shadow, so I'm just going to very lightly use the edge. These actually kind of go in an angle a little bit. Get some of that blue. See, I've <clears throat> figured out my problem. What? I just sit here and watch you painting. I don't watch the video of you painting. Ah, there So that's you why go. I don't catch a lot of times that you're there we off go. camera. Okay, so you have to watch me instead yeah. of the camera. You're, of you're too distracting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Nice color nails, too. I did paint my nails for this one. Okay, so this is going to stay dark um, all up under here, but it, there is going to be a little bit of light hitting the front of it. So I'm going to brush that on and then down in this area here where all these shell pieces are, I'm going to hold it upright and do just these overlapping layers. Some of them kind of go in an angle and some of them are straight up and down, but they're pretty... This is my favorite part is those little shell areas. Really fun. Okay, do a little bit of highlight right here. Do a little bit more of my burnt umber. A little bit darker. Okay, so we got our first question from the yes. rowdy chat crowd here. Nice. <laughs> um, would a pellet knife be a, an option to use here? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely could. Um, in fact, you know, you'd get a lot thicker texture using a pellet knife. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm I wanting to keep mine fairly flat. Just I'm adding so many other layers on top, but yeah, definitely you could do a palette knife and then dry it in between your layers. 
And by the way, you were right about grotto. Thank you. You're welcome. Is it what? What's the definition? Oh, you gotta make me look that up. Like a water cave. Yeah, it's like a with water cave thing. It was. I had to first figure out how to spell it, which is oh, it's a decorative something. It's like decorative cave. Yeah, so it's spelled G R O T T O. It's a small picturesque cave, especially an artificial one in a park or garden. But it, you know, other definitions are cave or cavern. Yeah. Small cave. So it might not have to have a waterfall then, just a cave, like a pretty cave. Picturesque cave, or did it have to have a waterfall? Have mixed a, a like an old, uh, olive brown, olive green here with the phthalo green and burnt sienna. So go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just, well, I was just I'm sure. reading all the little descriptions. It, okay. you know, it'll be what we say. want it to be. Okay. Because we bring all the facts to the <laughs> internet, so that's why people tune in. Oh, that's true. Animal facts, tractor facts, mm-hmm. grotto facts. Mm-hmm. Yep. A little bit of unbleached titanium to make this a little bit more opaque. A little brighter. And these, as we get down closer, the rocks are moss covered, so I'm going to start doing kind of more gra- green colors. There's still some browns, but a lot of this has a lot of, a lot of this dark green. titanium color. Put a little bit of that on this hillside. Mm-hmm. Most of this is going to be covered up by that tree, but I do want some stuff underneath happening so that if any of it shows, it makes sense. Yep, you're getting whispery. I'm getting whispery. Okay, yep. sorry. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna grab some yellow, and make a little bit of brighter green here with the unbleached titanium. And we'll do a little bit brighter green on this shelf here. I'm just gonna tap in for now. I'll probably go back in with a uh, another brush here, but. I don't want to let myself know where I want to put some of this greenery. There's a big shelf of greenery right here. And this whole this whole thing here has got a lot of green happening. And I added flowers to it. I you know, of course I had to have flowers, so you can leave yours without the flowers and just do rocks if you rocks and moss if you want to, but you know, me I had to get in my flowers there, so we're giving our flowers some background color too here for those to go on. But see how much of this dark I'm still leaving. That'll be really important later. I'm 
gonna grab some of that dark green and even add it a little bit in there too. See, I'm keeping my voice up. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> you need to talk louder or else I'll have to start taping you down again. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do it. <laughs> so the choice is yours. Okay. I'll talk louder. <laughs> I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. <laughs> oh, please don't tape me down anymore. That's been so nice not to have to go through that every time. I'll just put the blue tape over here on the table so you can see it. <laughs> Every time I start talking slowly, yeah. you're just going to slap the tape down. <laughs> Maybe peel just off like, a section. Remind me. Huh? Peel off a section of yeah. it for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll be good. <laughs> Here, let's put some of this green up here. <laughs> I think we're the only ones that think that's funny. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. Oh, no, people Inside in chat like it, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Do I need to zoom in at all? Are they, are they being able to see this detail? There is a lot of the little detail here. Mark's like, don't. I'll bully them into not wanting it zoomed in. Oh, they might want to. <laughs> all right, I'll get the remote control here. Let go. me know when you're ready. I'm ready. You tell me where to go there. All right, we're going in. There we go. Okay. Good. That's good. Right about there. Yeah, the only bad thing about zooming in is you don't get to see the palette anymore. So we do need to get our palette cam going. We've been talking about that for a while here. Okay, I'm going to grab making a softer moss with the um, unbleached titanium here in this color, in this green. And we're going to put in these rocks right here next to the water, very moss covered. And they're angled down. Oh, uh, remind us again what brush you're using. This is the number six or number four bright. Okay, that's right. Good job. And make sure you remembered. <laughs> I don't know that I remembered. I just looked at it. Really any any flat. You could use a smaller flat if you wanted to. Um, in fact, I'll probably switch to a smaller flat here in a bit. Grab some of the unbleached titanium and do some brighter bits right here. The light is hitting it. Keeping it very light. And if I want a solid edge to make it look like, you know, that rock face is squared off, I can set my brush at the edge and do like that. Grab some of that green. kind of stuff going on around where that waterfall is starting. Grab some burnt sienna. And I've got these greens in here so it's softening up the burnt sienna a little bit. And let's add a little bit of that in some places. go into some of these areas where there's it's the it's the light side of the rock but it might be in shadow so I'll add a little bit of this burnt sienna in some of these shadow areas for these front facing rocks keep it warm and then we'll put our cooler shadows in the in this side where they're not getting as much light. Oh, sorry. Thank you, hun. I took the picture off so it wasn't covering you up. Oh, good. I'll put 
put it back up when we zoom out a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. I think every now and then you can just pop it back on. I'm taking my artistic it. license with it. Do it. You're the master of the remote. <laughs> <laughs> Grabbing some unbleached titanium, and we'll put in right here. Brighten up that rock face right there. And if I use the edge of my brush, I can get some thinner lines too. So every now and then I'm turning it a little bit. I'm not always using it flat on. skim just the corner and every time I put a brighter edge it makes that rock pop forward so anytime I want a rock to look like it's jutting forward a little bit I'll put a nice bright edge where I want that to Happen. And that'll pull this part forward and push this part back into our shadows. What are you laughing about over there? I wasn't laughing. You weren't? I thought you were giggling. I don't think so. Huh? You weren't? No. I don't know what I was hearing. Maybe the dog. <laughs> well, I took a drink. Oh. Sorry, I need to stop asking you what you're doing. <laughs> <It's distracting. laughs> I mean, we'll, we can move the camera over here. It's okay. It's no? Okay. All right. Burnt umber. Let's grab some of that, that blue. Mix it with that burnt umber, the blue that I mixed before with the phthalo blue and the phthalo, then the, and the burnt sienna, and we're going to use that in our shadow areas here. Add some of this kind of gray brown on some of our shadow rocks. Some of that burnt sienna, add some of that right here. Let's get some yellow in here now. Clean that out. You notice I'm doing most of the rocks up here first. These ones down here are more of a bluish tone. They're, I don't know if it's a reflecting from the water or something, but they were more kind of purplish. So I'm gonna do those with different colors than the ones up here where they're getting more light. We'll grab the yellow oxide and mix a little bit of the burnt umber with it just to tone it down slightly. And then a little bit of unbleached titanium too. Yellow oxide, unbleached titanium, a little bit of burnt umber. And actually, let me switch to my smaller brush now. I'm going to grab my number two flat, bright, actually not flat. 
And we'll add some of this color in here. It's on. So we'd like to thank everybody who's joined us for this video today. Yes. We'd like to give a thumbs up if you're liking the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to Angela's channel. The links to all the uh, supplies are down in the description down there so you can see all the stuff that she's using. And also there's a link to the brush guys uh, for Angela's suggested brush list and a code for 5% off. Angela Fine Art. Good job. Yeah. Angela Fine Art to get 5% off. Thanks, son. You're welcome. I'd like to promote you. <laughs> okay. Oops, I'm off camera there. Well, I can't promote you and watch at the same time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Grab some white now. And go in here where my rock face is brightest and add still skimming. See how much of an angle I'm holding my brush at. But I have a pretty good amount of paint on here. So if I tap, I can get like more rounded shapes. And if I drag it, I can get these longer more squared off shapes. There's still some, there's some of this lighter color even on this shadow side, so I'm gonna, oh, maybe not that much. Grab some of the burnt. Grab some purple and burnt umber. Go back in here. Put in some shadows. Add some bright highlights to a few of these. Some white. And it's not like pure white, it's mixed with what's on my brush, so it's got a little bit of a purple cast to it. I'm grab some of that yellow and put a little bit of yellow around it too. A little bit of white. Just 
there's all these kind of freckles in the rocks. of moss or something hanging on them. some of that green. Do some green with white. Some of these rocks here with some of that green with white. It'll give it a little bit brighter. I'm grab some of that thala blue green mixture. I'm going to go back in here and have a little bit of that back in. It is still amazing how just different layers of, of the paint start giving it so much depth mm -hmm. and dimension. I know, it's crazy. I got a little too much on that. I'm just tapping it off there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I might let that dry and come back to it, but I'm going to move down here and get some of this down here going. So let's use that purple and burnt umber. And a little bit of unbleached titanium to soften it up and we'll do these rocks down here with this purpley color. So this one here especially has the purple. Leave some of these dark areas again. This color is a little bit lightened so you don't want to cover all of the dark areas with it but this will be our shadow shale color. This one's going to have greenery coming down over it, but I'm going to go ahead and put the purple underneath. rocks sticking out into the water here. Sometimes flat, sometimes on its side. So just kind of alternate so that you don't have repeating brush strokes. That's the main thing you want to avoid is to have 
all of your brush strokes going in the same width and direction all in a row. Oh, yeah, okay. You want to keep them random. So what did you just do there? What did add a little bit of the purple up here too. What? You just erased something? Uh-huh. Why yeah. did you erase it? Well, because I was showing you what not to do. Oh, okay. You can go in up high again. Okay. I'll zoom out a little bit. Just put a little of that purple up here and some of the shadows. And let's put some of the purple under here, under our waterfall in the dark area right here. Maybe a little bit of that purple showing through underneath in a few of these areas. So I'm going to put follow the line of our waterfall here. And we'll do some rocks. Most of this is going to be very so dark, you're not going to really be able to tell what it is, but we still want some color going on in there. Let's do some, a little bit of light hitting these rocks here. I just this figured just out my art channel. Titanium. What? My art channel will be what not to do. What not to do. <laughs> so, you know, you can do your video and then I'll follow it up with a video of, of what, what not, not to, do. to do. Nice. So they can learn that way also. I like that. Idea. <laughs> that was a half hearted laugh, but I'll take it. <laughs> 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 kind of a courtesy. Courtesy laugh. Yeah. Been married 29 years, laugh. <laughs> I got a laugh. I got a laugh. <laughs> Don't really find it all that funny, but I'm going to laugh anyways. Yep. I'm, I'm familiar with that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> titanium with my burnt umber here and I'm just gonna so really happy with that edge there okay let's do some of this rock here let's grab some of that burnt umber over to unbleached titanium and we'll start laying in this rock here and it's keeping my brush sideways here I'm gonna just skim along that front edge of it and then pull some horizontal lines back out. I don't want it to look outlined, so I'm going to skip a little bit as I outline it so that I don't have too much of a outline there. I'm just going to push my brush down and get all the paint off of there. some of this yellow and spray my canvas. Can't spray my palette. I always call my palette my canvas for some reason. <laughs> I noticed that in the other video that I was editing yesterday that I was editing the turtle video and I called my palette my canvas several times. It's funny. Okay, so yellow oxide and burnt umber. Okay. And while I've got this, I'm going to put a little bit of it up here.
bit of unbleached titanium mixed with that. Hold my brush and angle here. Just ensures that only part of the surface of the brush is touching the canvas at any one time. So it gives that kind of a regular look. And if I tilt it a little bit, then the corner edge will hit first so I can get more of a line I want to. Or if I hold it flat, I'll get more of a squared off. edge. There we go. Add some more of this color up here. We'll also be adding some greens and things too, but this is just one of the under layers. some of our green color. If I can get some, so I tried. Burnt Sienna in phthalo green here. Some unbleached titanium. A little bit of yellow oxide. Make it a little bit more okay. yellow. titanium here and put some of this color up here. This rock. Thank you. <clears throat> you got a hard job there, hon. Watch me watch chat. Especially everybody happy. I have real real no real excuse. Because of the reduced chat. Yeah, exactly. But. <laughs> Sorry. If I was different, you'd be like, okay, what have you done with my husband? Yeah, true. If you were actually paying attention, <laughs> I would be like, what the heck? Who are you? Exactly. <laughs> what did you do? some of the purple and a little bit of purple in this in some of these shadow areas and just pull it into the that's that purple with um, I think it had burnt umber and unbleached titanium in it add it a little bit to the bottom there let's add some of this green over here on these mossy rocks now A bit of 
and bleach titanium. Get some of that color down here on this. here on this rock too. Sorry, I'll try to keep it down over here. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yes. yes, new brush. Dear foot. Yes. Oh, I would give you a high five, but I can't reach you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, unbleached or uh, ultramarine blue and unbleached blue. Cadmium. Oh, don't start that. I'll start saying it. No, don't take much. Okay, we'll start over again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this uh, ultramarine blue and cad yellow medium gives us this kind of olive yellow, olive green. It's not yellow. With the deer foot, and I'll start stippling in a little bit of areas of moss. And I'm going to go along our shelf, so don't want to lose those little lines, those horizontal lines of. Shelfing, shelf, shale, or whatever. But I do want to add a little bit of moss here and there. I've zoomed in so you have to pull down a little bit just so that they can see the details you're yeah, adding thank there. You. This brush just gives a little bit more of that foliage look. Any um, any brush with with the frizzy edges. I've got several that I'm going to be using for the waterfall that are all uh, blown out, ruined brushes that I've kept because the fuzzier and more ruined they get, sometimes the better. In fact, if you let some paint dry in them, they can get kind of stiff too, which can help with some things, some techniques, those ones are soft, but um, it's basically the same, you know, uh, oh, there you can see the rake. It's the same uh, idea as a rake brush that it's got these uneven uh, bristles so that when you brush down, and I'll, I'll use the rake a little bit and then I'll use the other brushes because um, if you don't have a rake, but I wanted to show you how to use it if you do, because it was one of the brushes that is part of my um, the Brush Guys set that I recommended, the texture set. So that rake comes, this brush comes in with it, with the Deerfoot stippler. So I thought you might. This one's actually a quarter inch Deerfoot, but you could use your eighth inch too. Just use the very tip of it. Added a little bit of um, unbleached titanium to the color to get a little bit softer, softer green. A little bit down here on the rocks. Oh, pointing the tip down kind of helps loading it just mainly on the tip of the brush and then pointing that tip downwards while you tap will kind of help control it somewhat. You can also get lines by kind of dragging it so in some of these areas I might want more like lines so I can drag it. So 
whole area has got a lot of moss. It looks a bright green. I'm going to use the phthalo blue and the cad yellow light. This is going to make a really bright green. Like four parts per yellow to one part blue or maybe even like one to ten. That blue goes a long way. Ginger was, Ginger, I was watching Ginger Crick the other day. She was calling it kryptonite. Thala blue is kryptonite. And that is, the, that is a fact. It, like, I mean, the smallest amount will go forever and it overwhelms all the other colors around it that you're using with it. To use it in very small doses. Okay, so white, little tiny bit of thala blue, little tiny bit of yellow, or a lot of cad yellow light. And it's getting this really bright, vivid green color. And I'm just going to tap in my highlights on this moss with this. Angle my brush down so I get a straight line. I'm trying to find these rocks where they're, where they're kind of jutting out and catching the light. Look away for a second, and that's you know, you're like a toddler. <laughs> you know when I'm not looking, and I you wander go, away and you as go soon as you turn away. your head. Exactly. <laughs> you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> mm, it's all right. They're used to it by now, hopefully. Okay, a little bit down here. Drag a little bit of it. <clears throat> oh, it's so pretty. I love it. This is actually really fun to paint. I say that about all my paintings, but I mean it. <coughs> Sorry. All right, let's put in our tree. So I'm going to grab my liner or like a small round, number two zero round, and some black. And I'm going to put my tree in right in here. I'm going to just kind of start right here and just do some branches, do a nice thick trunk. Been it fairly thin, small though. This is a sapling. He's not getting a whole lot of light down here, so he's kind of reaching up for the sun. A little bit stunted. I don't have to do all the branches. You're only going to see these bottom few, but might see a few of them in between because we're kind of doing layers on this tree so it's always smart to just go ahead and put them in keep your branches thinner as you go out from the trunk so as they go out they're gonna thin as they get away from the trunk And if you can't get them thin enough, add a little bit of water to your paint will help thin it. Thin the paint, thinner paint with a round brush or a liner brush is really important. If you get it too thick, uh, your paint too thick, it won't um, it won't flow off your brush, and you'll get kind of uneven lines and such. I'm grabbing some unbleached titanium here, I'm gonna add some highlights to the trunk just on this one side here. Just random light brush strokes. This 
So the black will help kind of show up over the light areas and the this light highlight will kind of help show up in some of the dark areas. So it's smart to have both. Okay, good enough. Now let's use this brush here and I'm gonna make a really dark green. So I'm gonna grab some of that black and my phthalo green. And I could have used purple instead if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna use this since I've got black out already. I'm gonna lay out some shadows for my tree just underneath some of the middle area here will be darkest and the underside of the leaves. Let's tap in a little bit of this color and around our moss too just to kind of introduce it in a couple more places. first. Let's get some phthalo green. There we go. Yeah, just over and above those dark areas. Go right over the top of your branches. If you go around your branches, they're going to look like they're outlined. It's going to look weird. So set those back. You can always tap back in. Uh, okay, add some more of this light color here. Let me bring it out up. I had it on the back side of my brush so I'm just tapping kind of with the heel of the brush here. Grab some of that dark green middle there. Okay. Good, let's let that dry and then we'll put some highlights on it here a little bit. But okay, now that I've got my main everything on there on the rocks, I'm going to take a damp towel and just wipe off my rock area. Don't wipe off your waterfall because you still want that but I just want to be able to see where, if there's anything that I missed. Okay. Looking really good. I like it. color. A little bit of our purple. Let's 
makes a really interesting kind of, I don't know. Like a deep burgundy-ish color. And they add a little bit of white to it. I'm going to use this in my rocks here. There's this area right in here that's got kind of it is it looks like sand or something or little bits of grabs that unbleached titanium too. There's a highlighted area right in here where the light's hitting it. Let's do a little bit up here. A little bit right here. Use this light with this uh, round brush here. I'm going to make a bright green. I'm going to use some of that yellow, uh, cad yellow light with my yellow green here. It's going to make kind of a nuclear. sparingly, but I'm going to tap in. You could use your stippler again if you wanted to tap in some of this color. Some of my bright areas. coming off of the cliffs and grab some darker green let's do green and phthalo blue make a turquoise and right up here I've got that other green on my brush still so I've got a couple greens here And right in here, there's some greenery that's going to hang down, and I'm going to have it cascading down over these rocks a little bit. If you're more comfortable with the stippler, just use that. But I'm just going to do the little tappy motions to get some 
like looks like vines or something coming down here. And these are just little individual leaves that I'm putting in. I'll do some up here too. Grab some of that bright color. Put in some burn things coming off here. There's all kinds of some unbleached titanium. Get that yellow green color. Need a little bit of that. Just kind of setting my brush down and kind of popping it up to get these little, I'm not really dragging out these brush strokes. Just kind of setting my brush down and pulling, flicking up to get little leaves and just using kind of a variety of greens here. can start deciding you know do how much how much do I want any flowers and if so how much how much you know do I want to do with the flowers do I want to really go to town with them and do them everywhere or do I want to just do a couple different places uh, it's really up to you I would say I would keep the yellow areas down into your focal point because it's going to dry the eye the most so um, I use the purples and things for some of these areas that are on the periphery of the canvas uh, just so that they wouldn't pull my eye away from the focal point which is like right in here um, and mainly on this area so I'm going to mix up a little bit of white with my purple and have my brush kind of loaded with both colors at the same time. So a little bit of white, I didn't over blend, and a little bit of purple in here, and I'm just going to tap in some kind of wisteria shaped thicker up at the top and then tapering down to a point. Just a little. Easy as that. Do you want to zoom in for that part? I probably see that better. Okay. I grab some of the darker purple and add a little bit of the darker purple as well. doing them at different heights too that way they don't look like they're too repeated and then a little bit of white are these like boho rocks boho rock yeah they got their flowers mm-hmm mm -hmm.
and grab some quinacridone magenta and mix that with it. I'm going to make kind of a violet color. I'll add a few little flowers in here with this violet. Just tapping little dots. It's going to be hard to see. I'm going to add a little bit of white so you can see those better. We got super zoom going on here, so. Ooh. I just made that up. Super zoom. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. You could even make your tree a big, you know, a big pink tree or something if you wanted to. You could make it flowering. Add some white. This is the quinacridone magenta mostly. I still have a little bit of purple in my brush. It's side kind of on our our light source is coming in from the top here mostly on this side so we'll highlight that side of our flower clusters a little bit brighter cute what are you waiting for me to say that you knew it was coming right I guess rocks aren't cute, but flowers are. Flowers are cute. Yeah, the rocks are cool. Or like, I don't know. I need to upgrade my my uh, dope. That's the new. That's the new lingo, I think. Dope. Dope. Yep, those are dope. You ever heard of that? Well, yeah, but from like the '80s or. No, that's when? that's what they're using. It's no. come back as it's retro? Yeah. Huh. Pretty sure. Maybe they're using that ironically. And I just don't know. Okay, let's put let's put some yellow down here. You could do whatever you want. This is your little garden paradise grotto, whatever. You could cascade them if you want them to cascade down. Just kind of pull down a little bit. I'm keeping them fairly uh, horizontal because I want them to look like they're kind of clinging to those ledges. So, But then every now and then we can kind of pull a few down. To look like they're kind of cascading over the edge. And let's do some with this uh, red orange color. Cat red light. Get some white with it. Mix a little bit of the yellow. I'm going to put some of that color in with the yellow ones. Okay, I think we're good. I'm not going to overdo the flowers, but feel free to overdo. You want to your, your tree. Let's put in our super bright highlights for our tree. I'm gonna grab some white and get some of that. It's gonna be mostly white. A little bit of 
yellow green. A little bit of the yellow color there. There we go. Really, really bright. I'm going to go ahead and use this brush and I'm just going to tap in my little leaves for my highlights. And you can go back in with your stippler if you want to too, so don't feel like you have to use this brush. Whatever you feel comfortable using, that's, that's not the tool that is important, it's your expression, your whatever feels comfortable and right to you. So experiment with a few things, see what what you enjoy. I like the I like the combination of using the brush with the stippler just because the stippler gives kind of a softer look and then you can go in and do these like individual leaves with the brush. It kind of adds a little extra level of realism. I'm keeping in these highlight colors kind of at the top of my clusters of leaves. Here. And then I'm going to use a little bit of it in my greenery down here too. One of the other things that you can do is use these lighter colors. If you feel like you got them too bright, what you can do is go back in now, now that you've got them bright, and do some transparent washes over the top. So take some of your thalo green or uh, make a turquoise or something like that, and then wash over some of it. It'll set it back a little bit, but you've got that brightness in there. Uh, it'll give it kind of a glow that you can't get otherwise if I had put in this bright. If I had mixed this color with white, say, you know, and tried to get a color this this intensity, you get a different look by washing over the top of lighter colors. So I'm going to wash over with some thalo green and thalo blue mixture here. It'll set back some of our... It's picked up a little bit of that, that orange color too, which I don't mind. titanium. I'm going to put in a few really bright rocks here. Holding my brush at an angle.
Use it down here too. Oh, sorry, right along the edge of that rock. It's pretty bright. some burnt umber and with my unbleached titanium here I'm going to sip that back just a little bit okay all right I think we're all we're ready for our water what are you thinking are you ready for this I'm ready <laughs> start with the right brush and then I'll show you this brush in comparison with them both down. I'm going to use a little bit of phthalo blue and my white here. I'm going to mix a Bright blue. Now I'm kind of taking liberties with the photograph because obviously you're not seeing this bright blue color in here, but I wanted a little bit of it underneath. It's just going to help uh, it read as water. Um, so I'm going to do it along this side here. Start up here and just drag it lightly down. doing all of what I, I just want a little bit of this color kind of peeking through my water so just put it in a few places like that and then I'm gonna use it and drag it through my water down here horizontally Let's use this other brush here. I can show you what this is going to look like. It's going to be pretty similar. I'm going to grab a little bit of white now. Yeah, I found that this one was a little bit too fly away. <laughs> it had so many curly bits. I was almost, it was almost too much. So I'll show you kind of a little bit of it and then I'm going to switch to a, a little brush that gives me a little bit more control. But I'm going to start up here and tap in little bit. You're going to come down. It kind of comes at an angle like this and then it sweeps down. So I'm going to do long sweeping strokes. I have my brush loaded not too thick but I do want enough paint on there that it's going to flow. I just don't want it too clumped up so if it's clumping up too much you can kind of tap it so that it opens up. There we go. See how having that blue under there helps. 
Let me try it with this angle brush here and see what this does. So you might try it with different brushes. You could do it with a stiff bristled flat brush too. You know, it doesn't have to be um, a beat up brush. It could just be kind of a flat brush that's got a little bit of stiffness. And as long as you did it kind of like you did the rocks and held it at an angle, you can get kind of some of that broken up look that we're going for. So. I want the the dark areas to show through, so I don't want to cover too solidly. I'm not liking that one too much. Let me add a little bit of water to my paint and see if that helps. It's been a while since I put it out. I might need a little bit extra water just to help it flow. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Using the edge of the brush now to draw some lines. But I want all this kind of broken up stuff here, so I'm not, don't want it to go solid on me, but I do want these lines to happen, so. Okay, looks good. Then I'm gonna tap a little bit of splash it's hitting the rocks and then we'll do the next layer coming down tap for splash These ones are kind of going this direction, and these ones are going this direction. And this is actually kind of going pretty long here. And then it's hitting right here and pulling in this direction. A little bit more white, pull in brighter. And there's all these little things that are skipping and hitting this side of this rock here. So I'm just going to do some little random bits along this rock face here.
there's that big pool of water right here. And then it all kind of pours down right here in the middle. Grab a little bit more of that bright white. Do some really bright splash back right here. Right where the they start to flow down is where you're going to have the brightest. So if we go back in and brighten up those areas where just before it starts to fall off the rock, you'll get a little bit more light catching it. It'll look a little bit more realistic. I want to add a little bit, a little tiny bit of yellow. Add a few little yellow highlights in the water. Just a little bit. <clears throat> Rinse that off. Are you sure this is just a five? Just a five? Yeah. Why? Well, you think it's a little harder? Does it seem harder? I don't know. Um, maybe a six. Okay, maybe six. Seven? Six or seven? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple here. A little bit of purple on this side. And in some of these shadow areas. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. It does have a lot of a lot of details. Okay, grab. So I've switched to my fuzzy quarter inch angle brush now, and I'm going to use that to tap in my waterline here. This whole thing here is going to get lots of splashy. And horizontal lines in our water coming out. Bright white. You could even splatter if you wanted to. You could take your, your uh, I'm gonna try this stippler here. I've, I've contemplated doing this with the fan brush. If I was doing this on a larger canvas, I probably would have used the fan brush. But we had such small little areas, tight areas to work with. I just didn't think the fan brush would fit properly in here. So let's do some splash up with this Deerfoot Stippler. With the white. Water's real churning right there. I'm going to pull down with this. Go over the top of that purple that I put in there. And over the top of the yellow.
good for the good for the stippling part, but I, don't, I didn't like it for the drawing. Need to dry that off. Okay. It's hitting some rocks up here too, kind of splashing as it comes down, so add a little bit of that. Sounded like a sigh there. I am sighing. Like, just trying to make sure that I'm getting it all here. Grab a little bit of that blue, get it in over here. Now, I, you can overwork this, so I don't want to do too much on it, but I'm kind of wanting to mess with it a little bit so at any point when you're like yes that looks good just stop you know honestly i'm just kind of messing with it here so a little bit more white brush here to pull it down. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to grab my right again here. I'm going to use some purple, a little bit of phthalo blue, a little bit of unbleached titanium. some rocks in these shadows here. Grab some burnt umber and I'm going to clean up this water edge here. There's some rocks that are kind of coming up over in front of this area so I'm just going to put those back in. Maybe add a little bit of this color down here.
let's do some work in the water a little bit and then we'll be done. Grab some of that unbleached titanium or um, and uh, yellow blue and burnt sienna and make that kind of greenish color. that turquoisey blue the burnt sienna just kind of tones it down a little bit the unbleached titanium will make it a little bit more visible I'm just gonna use it some of that pure white just come below and do some diagonal little highlights you could also use uh, I was thinking you could probably use zinc white too would give you a little bit more transparent highlights would be pretty in the water here really really good really cool mm -hmm. I feel like there's some darker in here that I want to put back in I got a little bit too much of my water in here so I'm gonna yeah it looks like it has eyes <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Yours done. That's fine. I'm just fiddling with it. I feel like I got a little bit too much. I'm gonna use my water. They're like, don't do it. It was fine. 
It's fine. We'll fix it. <laughs> we'll fix it, I promise. It'll just look better to have a little bit more of the undercolor showing through. I'm, I'm trusting too you. Much, too much of that undercolor. Especially right in here. It'll give a little bit more depth. white on top, but not much. We don't want to cover everything up. I just did one too many layers of white over the top of that. I got so interested in showing you how that I didn't stop when I should have. Okay. Very light pressure. need to dry that. It already looks better even though it's not finished. I'm going to use that rake. It seemed like it did pretty well. Use the rake and wet down the brush a little bit, the, the paint a little bit so that it flows for you. Use a little bit of the blue with it. Like a very, very light blue. Bright white right there in the middle. No whispering. Sorry, thinking really hard here. Caution, artist thinking. Exactly. Who knows what's going to happen? Pause That's for right. Artist thinking. All good. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> wow, you caught me off guard. Really? I don't think you ever said, almost done. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, Actually, I'm seeing that there's some that are coming down. Uh -huh. I knew you weren't done. <laughs> <laughs> there's just a few that kind of come over here that are like little stray, wispy things.
There we go. question yes asking could you use an opaque white on the water would that help uh, do they mean transparent white uh, yeah I mean yeah if I used um, if I used the uh, zinc white the transparent white you could you could get some different effects too probably tint it a little bit on this side. And I'm going to grab some of the unbleached titanium, a little bit of white. I'm just going to go back in and do some really bright highlights on a few of these places. Okay, they said that the bottle says opaque white on it. That would be titanium white that I was using then, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the same as what I was using. catching a few of these spots that I think might need a little bit brightening up. I'll make it look like the sunlight's kind of coming through and hitting these rocks a little bit. Sorry, but you can hopefully see what I'm doing. Follow along. It's just white here. Just adding a little bit of extra detail to some of these places. I'll grab some of my olive green. Green and brown. Add a little bit of that to this rock here. Alright. I'm going to use 
little bit of that turquoise blue from the water and wet and thin it out and just add a little bit of it in over the top of my water in a couple places. Just a wash of color. Tuesday with another painted for you. I don't know what, but hope you enjoyed our bonus video for this month and we will see you next time. Bye.